Live from the KATC TV3 studios, this is Acadiana's News Channel at 6. Frankly, I think our legislators are going to have good sense and, and, then, and the, tax back, the tax exchange will probably die a merciful death. And, um, and then w they will also tackle those critical issues that, uh, that we know are out there. That's former Governor Kathleen Blanco speaking her mind about Governor Bobby Jindal's tax reform plan. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for choosing Acadiana's News Channel at 6 o'clock. The greatest challenge in Baton Rouge right now is, of course, tackling the state budget. KTC's Alex LeBlanc caught up with lawmakers as well as former Governor Kathleen Blanco at today's Acadiana Press Club meeting. There was one thing on the minds of the lawmakers at today's forum at SLCC. The biggest challenge we got this the biggest issue, I think, for us right now in Acadiana is to solve the, the situation with the LSU. On the minds of the lawmakers at today's forum at SLCC. The biggest challenge we got this session is, of course, the budget. The hurdles will be tax reform, uh, of course, and the budget. Balancing the budget is going to be, in my mind, with, you know, with the addition of the tax reform, but balancing the budget is probably the biggest hurdle we have. But balancing the budget is a key issue for the Louisiana representatives. And so is Governor Jindal's proposed tax reform, which will do away with the state's income tax in favor of a sales tax. I think folks, as they, as they begin to understand what's in the bill and what it accomplishes, that they'll start to see that, you know what, this is, this is better than I thought it was. One person not on board with the new tax proposal, former Governor Kathleen Blanco. Blanco believes the new tax system is a, quote, smoke screen, hiding what she thinks are the real issues, like the state's deficit, which she says won't be fixed by an increase in sales tax. So, yeah, then everybody becomes a new tax collector for the state of Louisiana, uh, and not just the retail industry. So we, you know, it, it's just very um, disturbing, I would say. The lawmakers attending today's lunch say they'll probably be debating the bill before the session even begins. And laugh yet, I'm Alex Labot for KTC TV3. Now those members on the panel we spoke to today all say that they're ready for a spirited debate on the tax reform plan once the session rolls around next month. But many of them have had different items they plan on focusing on once the time comes. The biggest issue I think for us right now in Acadiana is to solve the, the situation with the LSU hospital system and the private partnership. If that issue isn't solved before July 1st, then that budget hole is going to be a lot deeper. Uh, the, the whole teacher evaluation process needs to be re-looked at, re-evaluated. Uh, I have a bill in the hopper, uh, it's Act 54, and hopefully that we can look at uh, making sure that the uh, evaluation process is done correctly. And hopefully, at the end of the day, our teachers will be happy with what, what, what we're doing. I have a bill, uh, a BP all spill bill. It's a constitutional amendment to dedicate the Clean Water Act fines to keep the uh, bill in perspective along with the Restore Act to where the dollars would go directly in the Coastal Protection Fund, which is a constitutionally protected fund, so that Louisiana will do the right thing with these dollars. Now, the forum with those legislators was all part of the first meeting of the Acadiana Press Club. The meeting was a chance for members to question Acadiana lawmakers on the upcoming legislative session. Members are journalists, public relations professionals, and really anyone interested in the inner workings of the news industry. The Acadiana Press Club will hold monthly newsmaker forums where members will question guests on current events and hot-button topics. I just think it makes for the Lafayette area, the Cadiana area, to, to be more informed on what's going on in Baton Rouge, around the community, um, and, and it's just good. The more information that folks have, I think the better decisions everyone makes. And on the topic of Governor Jindal's tax proposal, more than 250 Louisiana clergy members signed a letter to the governor protesting his plan. They say the plan is unfair and would make the financial burden for poor and moderate income families even worse. The governor wants to get rid of the state's personal income tax and to offset the loss, sales taxes would go up. Critics say when combined with local sales taxes, Louisiana would have the highest average sales tax nationwide. And Governor Jindal, Jindal was in Generette today for the announcement of plans to expand the Metal Shark boat yard, shipyard. The company will be taking on new military, law enforcement, and commercial boating contracts. The expansion, by the way, will create 88 new jobs. We're proud that Metal Shark is expanding in Louisiana so that our people can continue building the tools our military needs to defend our nation. 
Metal Shark is just of one of many companies here in the state that works to meet the needs of our military while also providing great jobs for our hardworking men and women. Here's Rob's 24-hour forecast. Well, very spring-like across the area today, but we do have a weak cool front on the way. As we look at the radar satellite composite, all the big thunderstorm action over toward Mississippi, but we're seeing a couple of isolated cells in northeast Louisiana, and we can't rule out isolated showers later on this evening. Meanwhile, very warm temperatures near 70 this morning, topping out in the lower 80s this afternoon and still sitting at uh, 78 degrees right now in Lafayette, down 2 degrees from the last hour. You can see mid-80s off to the north. So slight rain chances through this evening up until about midnight, 1 a.m., then a little bit cooler by daybreak. Partly sunny skies tomorrow, not quite as warm, but still warm, 77 the projected high. More unsettled weather midweek and maybe later this week. We'll talk more about that and have your TrueView forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, thanks, Rob. The town of Doosan was once known as the town that cannot grow. Mayor Johnny Thibodeau is looking to change that, even creating the slogan, Discover the New Doosan. The town annex, 60 acres north of I-10, Progressive Waste is building a transfer station and repair shop for its trucks. Next door, a new Love's truck stop, casino, Wendy's, and Chester's Chicken restaurants will all open. In all, nearly 100 new jobs will be created, and the mayor says this is only the beginning. A Waffle House people has approached us, new motels are looking for the interstate uh, along this interstate route, so I think that this is just the beginning of something that's going to be real great. Now, if you have painful migraines, challenges with coordination, and strained vision, listen up. They're all symptoms of hydrocephalus. There's no cure for it, and if left untreated, it can lead to death, but there are ways to treat the condition. KTC's Alison bourne spoke to a 15-year-old patient from Franklin and found out how her mother is putting the condition on the map. For years, Lauren Freeman battled painful migraines and headaches. It's like someone stabbing you in your head most for migraines. It's horrible. And I went to the emergency room countless times. Lauren learned last year that these were more than painful headaches. A CAT scan revealed a large amount of water on her brain, and she was diagnosed with hydrocephalus. I knew what it was. I knew what to expect. I knew how hard it could be. So I was devastated. Hydrocephalus, also known as waterhead, is when spinal fluid that is normally in your head builds up and it's not able to drain. Treatment for Lauren meant having surgery to get a shunt put into her head. By putting the shunt in place, you can actually set it so that the pressure will be what you want it to be at for that to actually let spinal fluid drain. So the pressure will not get too high in her head and will not cause any further damage in terms of either brain injury or complications such as headaches or vision changes. Since her diagnosis, Lauren's mother has started the first pediatric hydrocephalus foundation chapter in Louisiana. I hope that this support group helps other kids with hydrocephalus to find someone that they can share their story and feel comfort and know that they're not the only ones going through this. In Lafayette, I'm Allison Bourne-Vanak for KTC TV3. Lauren's mother, Rebecca Wright, is currently organizing the first fundraiser for Louisiana's chapter of the Pediatric Hydrocephalus Foundation. It will be held March 27th at the Ice Skaters Playoff Game, and if you use the code ICE, you get tickets to the game for $10, and $1 from each ticket will be donated to the organization. Still ahead at 6 o'clock, new developments in the search for a missing teacher from New Orleans. That's after Rob's TrueView forecast, some unsettled changes on the way. He's got the details right after this.
from the KATC Weather Lab. Here's Rob's forecast. Welcome back. Well, very warm out there today. Slightly cooler as we go through the middle part of the week and the risk of even a few showers this evening as a weak front pushes on in. Now, as we take a look at Power Doppler HD, we've opened it up uh, to spy on some showers and thunderstorms at well north of the area up toward uh, Concordia and Catahoula parishes where, where a severe thunderstorm watch has just been extended. That's mainly north of Avoyles Parish and northeast of Rapides Parish. And you can see heavier storms near the Natchez area and then into uh, much of Mississippi. In fact, as we look at Titan 3D, we'll see some of the 3D growth on some of these cells up to about 45 to 50,000 feet and the possibility is some hail. That's why there are severe thunderstorm watches for our friends off to the east. In fact, as we put the radar satellite composite, the southeast seeing strong storms, a lot of the energy focusing here. Meanwhile, farther to the north, it's all snow, a disturbance in the northwest producing snow in the big sky country and then a nice swath of snow across the Great Lakes into the northeast so old man winter not giving up in the northeastern quarter of the nation but meanwhile farther to the south it's spring storms and the threat of damaging winds maybe even tornadoes tornado watches across alabama into georgia and then severe thunderstorm watches western alabama into south central mississippi and these areas shaded in yellow these are severe thunderstorm warnings for cells they're producing a fairly large hail especially in eastern mississippi meanwhile closer to home relatively quiet weather today. The clouds burning off nicely this afternoon and we wound up with temperatures well into the 80s this afternoon. Officially 82 in Lafayette after a morning start at 69 so temperatures a good 10 to 15 degrees above normal. No records being threatened however and rainfall on schedule so far for the month. Slight rain chances tonight and then again tomorrow night early Wednesday but right now our best rain chance may come late Friday and or Saturday. 70 8 degrees right now with mostly sunny skies. West-southwest winds ahead of that front uh, reflecting those warm temperatures. And again, as we look at statewide temperatures, after the warm start, temperatures really warming this afternoon. Upper 70s, lower 80s right now. Mid-80s across Senla. And then you have cooler temperatures to the north and west with that front. So that's why we're seeing some pretty hefty thunderstorms and the gradient's only stronger as you get into Mississippi. So our future cast indicating the threat of showers developing right around 9 till about 11 o'clock tonight, maybe midnight coastal parishes, and then uh, rain chances knocked down. Slightly cooler air moving in, and tomorrow we'll start off for the most part. We'll call it partly sunny. Should be another pleasant day with temperatures rising into the lower 70s at lunchtime and mid to upper 70s tomorrow afternoon, so not much cooler behind this frontal boundary. In fact, it will be dropping into the Gulf of Mexico. It'll become nearly stationary tomorrow night. Then a disturbance rolls in from the northwest. Models have been back and forth on our rain chances tomorrow night, early Wednesday. So we'll cover it with a 30% chance tomorrow night through early Wednesday. And then we'll go back to partly to mostly sunny skies for Wednesday afternoon. A little bit cooler as high pressure tries to bank in for a day or so. But it's going to be short-lived as yet another weather system shaping up in the west will bring a front this way late Friday and or early Saturday. Timing still up in the air on that next weather system. So for tonight, mid to upper 50, so cooler late tonight than tomorrow. Partly sunny skies, temperatures rise nicely into the mid to upper 70s once again. A little bit cooler yet tomorrow night, temperatures into the low to mid 50s. And then for your Wednesday after morning clouds, afternoon sun, temperatures back into the lower 70s. Spring feeling good. 57 degrees overnight tonight. Later on, the risk of a few showers, possibly a thunderstorm, especially northern portions of Acadiana. We'll keep an eye on those storms to the north and east of us. Then for tomorrow, mostly sunny to partly sunny skies. Should be a very pleasant day. Lower humidity, more importantly, and that's going to feel good. Again, 77 the high, lower 70s on Wednesday with rain chances early in the day. And then the risk of showers and thunderstorms spiking up late Friday, Friday night, early Saturday. And again, hopefully most of the weekend should be good with the sun returning late Saturday and for sure on Sunday. All right, we'll look forward to that, okay. Rob. Thank you. Well, still to come on KTC, we'll tell you what the state is doing to get residents back into their homes. We're forced out by that sinkhole in Assumption Parish. We cover Louisiana in a minute. Next.
In New Orleans, police have found surveillance video of a missing teacher on the last night she was seen. Police say they believe Terrilyn Minette was traveling alone in her car after she left a New Orleans bar. Detectives have reviewed surveillance video from three red light cameras in the area, as well as cameras from local businesses and private residences. Police say she was last spotted driving into City Park. Meantime, EquiSearch continues to work with investigators in hopes of finding Minette. The state will appoint a special committee to determine when Assumption Parish residents forced out of their homes by that huge sinkhole can return home. That sinkhole developed back in August, for forcing the evacuation of 150 homeowners. Geologists say there was new activity at the sinkhole yesterday as several more trees fell into it. A Maurice homeowner is doing some repair work after a car crashed into their home. Police say the vehicle crashed through the home on Highway 92 in the Rue de Cannes subdivision. The car went out the patio doors and landed against the back fence. No one was hurt. Investigators say the driver told them he nodded off at the wheel. Stay with us, everybody. We'll have more news after this. KATC and Roofing Louisiana teaming up to provide tools for schools. KATC and Roofing Louisiana teaming up to provide tools for schools. The Tools for Schools team on the road again. This week they're at Northside High School. KTC's Daniel Phillips makes the delivery. Well, we're here at Northside High School. KTC has partnered with Roofing Louisiana for the Tools for Schools program. We're helping to get resources into the classroom. Now, today we're delivering a set of tables, chairs, headphones to Miss Guidry's classroom so she can help put together a media center. We'll go on inside and check it out. We do a lot of blogging, a lot of technology in the classroom, so I wanted to create a media center for my seniors so that they can come in and use our technology whenever they need it. So excited that we could um, get stuff for the kids so that their learning will be easier, they can take more active role in their learning um, and be more comfortable in, in the, our classroom environment. What kind of stuff do you guys do with the blogs? Uh, we, like, we read an article of the week and then we type up a paragraph on like a reflection about it. From all of us at Northside, Thank you to the school!
One, two, three, Mike check, fresh off a weekend conference sweep, Raging Cajun. Check one, two, three, fresh off a weekend conference sweep. Raging Cajuns baseball now 16 and 3 on the year. Good evening and welcome into sports. Fresh off a weekend conference sweep, Raging Cajuns baseball is now 16 and three on the year. The way they've done it is obviously swinging the bats well, but let's be real. They really have done it every way. Whether it's playing tough defense, beating teams with small ball or great pitching performances, UL is having great success in 2013. But as Coach Robichaud will tell you, with success, failure can easily follow right behind. This team is driven. They're playing with a sense of urgency every time out. Tyler Gerrard leads the team in hitting He's got a 429 batting average on the season. Also has 13 RBIs and three home runs. Maybe the biggest contributor, though, has been Blake Trahan. The freshman shortstop has stepped in and played at a high level. UL coaches knew how good this kid could be. That's why they offered him as a freshman in high school. In the field, he's smooth and has great range, but it's been his job at the plate. That's what's caught opposing offenses' attention. Coach Trahan and Brooks Battle were working with him in a camp and came across the street and told me, Coach, we need to offer this kid now because he's doing some things with his hands that, you know, most kids can't do at this age. Most freshmen take a good year to year and a half almost to sometimes slow the game down. He's ahead, way ahead of schedule um, in, in where we thought he'd be. That's what's leading to, I think, solid defense on that side. In today's recent poll from the NCAA, Cajuns continue to creep into the top 30, number 31 today. LSU baseball had an 11-game win streak snapped by Mississippi State yesterday, but that was ended when Cody Glenn struggled to get through the fourth inning, gave up six earned runs. The Tigers lost the game, but they won the series 2-1. LSU will play Wednesday night at the box against Northwestern State, and they have a home weekend series against Auburn starting Friday. Now, times have been better for UL softball, a series loss this weekend to South Alabama has put the Cajuns record at 19 and 11. The good sign is that these young ladies continue to fight. Sunday they came back and battled their way to a 2-1 victory to avoid the conference sweep behind the arm of Jordan Wallace. She had 15 Ks and she was a big contributor as was freshman Shelly Landry out of STM and Sarah Corbello. They came up with a couple of big hits. They're young as is this entire team. Last year's squad was a culmination of four or five years of hard work. Growing pains just like the ones they're going through now. It's still early though, and Coach Lotif can see the improvement in these young players. I see the uh, I see the progress. The kids' attitudes are still uh, are still good. We had opportunity really to sweep that weekend. Some of the struggle is part of the journey, and it's part of the it's part of the process. 
Also, guys, free agency is in full mm -hmm. swing. The Saints uh, signed a tight end today, but also there's a report. One report that says they've agreed to terms with Namdi Asamoah, okay. a guy who is an unbelievable mm -hmm. corner, would good. really help out this yeah. team. He's played under Rob Ryan before, yeah. but there's also other reports out of New Orleans mm -hmm. saying, no, not it's not true. So uh, okay. still could happen, though. All right, mm -hmm. the plot thickens with that, Andy. Yeah, Thank right. you. Well, we're all out of time for Acadiana's News Channel at 6. We'll be back here again at 10. Hope to see you then.